There was a Broadway show in the Q&A section after the show for a play called Slave Play. So this is meant to be controversial. Let me just give you the premise of it and then I'll tell you why this is making news today. A white woman stood up and started talking about how she felt attacked because Slave Play um, you know, talks about racial issues. The playwright is a black gay man. Uh, and the whole point here is to talk about you know, interracial couples who are having difficulty in their sex lives. So according to reports, um, they take part in an antebellum master slave role playing therapy workshop to try to fix their issues. So obviously this is a controversial play, okay? It is what it is. So they're doing the Q&A portion of it. And Jeremy O'Harris, the black playwright behind this play gets attacked by a woman. Now let's take a look at what she has to say. I don't want to hear that white people are the playing all the time. Because you're talking about black people right now. Right, arrest, having children taken away and being told that as a single woman, I'm not good enough to raise them. How the am I not a marginalized member of this society? We haven't said you are. I, I've never once said that you as a white woman are not a marginalized person, but if you heard that in my play, I don't know what to tell you. Perhaps like read it or see it again. She was unhappy with the way white people were depicted in the play. Look, obviously I haven't seen the play, uh, but I, I do give Jeremy Harris credit for you know, listen, listening to her and hearing her out, he certainly didn't have to do that since she just like stood up and interrupted the whole Q and A portion to like share how angry she was at okay. the depiction of white people. So that people. was the Q and A portion, not that was, in the middle of the play. No, it wasn't in the middle okay, of the play. Okay. But it was the Q and A section, and you know, you, we all know how Q and As work. Someone raises their hand if they're chosen, they get to ask the question, and the whole back and forth happens. She wanted to make her statements, but apparently they hadn't called on her yet. So she decided to stand up and, and, and interrupt the whole process. And so she talked about her experiences as a single mother, losing her children and also being a survivor of rape. So she was upset because she feels that she's part of a disenfranchised group that isn't represented accurately or represented at all in this play. But so write your own play, write your own play about your unfortunate experiences like this is not about you, this is about his experience, this is about important things about the black community. And if you're this angry about it, it probably reflects more on your view of racial issues than it does on the play itself. I cannot even imagine getting that angry in a public setting about anything, road rage, like when they put cream cheese on my bagel and I don't like Cheese, like all of that stuff would make me less angry than that, but those things do make me angry. <laughs> That's hilarious. Okay. Yeah. Well. I mean you're 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 notoriously calm in stressful situations, like at Trump rallies, for instance. So but, I, you're right. I can't imagine you ever getting that upset or <laughs> or feeling entitled enough right. to interrupt something to share your anger toward whatever perceived injustice that Which play is had. Ironically, probably his point about the play. Like right. the entitlement of of white people in some way. I mean, I, there, there, there are so many entitled white people. Like it's like that meme of the woman who's always who's uh, like the Karen or whatever. Oh yeah, the yeah. The white blonde woman who yells at customer service people for no reason. <laughs> the like, one who wants to see the manager who right? immediately wants to see the manager. <laughs> like that woman wants to see the manager stat of this play. It's so true. Okay, so <laughs> let me give you some more details. So after Harris responded to the woman during the Q and A, she kept going shouting that she was tired of hearing a whole bunch of stuff about how white people don't get how racist they are and about a time 300 years ago. So she's basically saying stop complaining about racism, you know, slavery was a long time ago. Let's let's get over it. And um at one point uh the playwright jumps in with a a great and devastating point. It's really hard to figure out a solution to 400 years of oppression. Because of course, it's not like oh, the white people were mean to black people 300 years ago and then after that they were great and everything's been fine since. No, right. I mean obviously there are huge societal issues right now. Um, and then <laughs> she also said, you know, I spent my whole life trying to make a effing solution, the woman yelled back as audience members tried to calm her down. No, you haven't. <laughs> 
what, like, well, well, her solution is to, you know, interrupt the Q&A section. Yeah. Yeah. No, uh, she wants to, like, w what, do you work on racial relations? Is that your job? Are you Rachel Dolezal? Like, I don't understand, <laughs> right? Are you working? I mean, I'm just joking. It's if she was a, a white person working at the NAACP. Or I don't understand how you're saying you worked on it your entire life. It's ridiculous. And so Harris said he didn't want to shut the irate patron down as some outraged on his behalf later suggested he could have. Rage, he says, is a necessary lubricant to discourse. And he wrote his play filled with his own anger about a history of racism that he says we cannot escape. So he treated the outburst as a chance to listen rather than dismiss after the after the first shouted sentences. So I give him a lot of credit for that. He certainly didn't have to do that, right? Yeah. I don't know if I would have handled it the same way. Um, but you know, I think it takes a big person to take a step back and put your ego like aside. And just say, all right, this is a hostile situation, and rather than try to shut it down, I'm gonna hear her out, you know? Because I have no doubt that she's had, you know, these difficulties in her life. But your difficulties in life don't outweigh or cancel out a very real problem that the black community in America has been dealing with for, for hundreds of years. Yeah, it's extremely egocentric. And um I, I, it's good you clarified to me that it was the Q and A portion and not the play itself. Can because you imagine? I know because if it was the play itself, it would have been like one of those moments in Cats or whatever where there's someone sitting in the audience and then they're a part of the play, right? Oh like my she God. could have been the oppressed <laughs> white person who's like <laughs> gets on stage and you know is actually one of the play members. It's a very creative things thing that lame plays do. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.